The sergeant in this video shows no remorse. In fact, he says he would uh, do it all over again, or I'm paraphrasing, he certainly wouldn't change a thing. And this is after he cost the city $450,000 in this case. But there's a lot more to this guy. Good evening. A man is assaulted by Henderson police after he tried to help them. And now the city has to pay nearly half a million dollars. Thanks for joining us. I'm Denise Valdez. And I'm Brian Loftus. A News Now investigator Vanessa Murphy obtained video from that incident, sat down with the victim and his lawyer. Now we do want to warn you, it is graphic. For Jim Herndon, it's been six long years since he became the victim of excessive force by Henderson police. This bad situation got out of hand and things just spiraled. He was an assistant store manager at Sportsman's Warehouse. Officers arrive after a call about an armed shoplifter. Here, officers approach the suspect and he runs. We had a firearm, had a firearm. Herndon. I didn't know what he would do. A former law enforcement officer for more than two decades. Just instincts from lots of years of training. Intervenes. I recall jumping on him. But he never expected what would follow. I saw stars. This is Sergeant Michael Gillis ramming Herndon in the head with an M for and using a stun gun. Somebody had my had their hands wrapped around my throat and was lifting me up, which so I peeled fingers off my throat, um, got hit a few more times in the face. He says he suffered multiple injuries, including a concussion, and he has permanent nerve damage and some memory loss. But there's one moment he can recall after the incident. They kind of chuckled and said, hey, we must have mistaken you for the bad guy. And it was really at that moment that I was kind of like, I felt like well, they're all standing out here getting their story straight. He later reached out to the city of Henderson. To even do the complaint and, and do the follow-up with that. I mean, they don't make it easy at all. In 2021, attorney Marjorie Hoff filed a lawsuit against the city, Sergeant Gillis, and five other officers. It was very clear to me that, number one, the police had no plan, that they escalated the situation to a point that it did not need to escalate. It was safer to have more people. This is Sergeant Gillis on the stand. And you would not change a thing? No. He testifies the incident tarnished his reputation, a claim Hoff is ready for. But you had previously had excessive force complaints for punching a woman in the face? There was questions on it, allegations, yeah. You had allegations against you for... Sexual harassing women at the Starbucks where you were would do your paperwork? I think it was that wordage, but yeah. Also for um, inappropriately selling weapons? Yep. Voiding traffic tickets for friends and family? Yes, I did that. Five to ten inquiries about using excessive force by internal affairs? Sounds probably right. You've been placed on leave with pay four times? Yes, ma'am. What types of incidents cause an officer to be placed on leave with pay? Shooting incidents where somebody dies or there's substantial bodily harm to that person. And then the verdict? The city of Henderson must pay $450,000. What stands out to you about the Henderson Police Department after handling this case? They clearly have a culture that allowed this to happen. They had no intention of properly investigating either the incident or the internal affairs investigation. The whole thing was just a big rubber stamp. We're just gonna say they did the right thing. It was never about money. It was about accountability. My only hope is, is that it's enough that it will make Henderson change their ways, and I worry about that. He says the video shows the moment his life changed forever. Still difficult to watch, but he says he hopes his story may inspire others to seek accountability. Vanessa Murphy, 8 News Now. Attorney Marjorie Hoff says this is the first civil rights trial in state history under a new rule that came down from the Nevada Supreme Court. Now, previously, civil rights cases had to be handled only in federal court. Gillis appears to have retired from the Henderson Police Department. Vanessa reached out to the city, did not receive a response in time for this report. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. The bad apple don't fall far from the bad apple tree. And this is one bad umbre. 
Breaking news right here tonight at 6. Another family member under arrest in the Jamie Knoll investigation. It is our top story for you tonight. Hello, everybody. I'm Doug Prophet. The former Clark County, Indiana Sheriff's daughter now in jail, arrested and charged with nine felonies of her own. Now, five of the charges are for alleged theft and four of them are for alleged tax evasion. She's accused of charging nearly $100,000 worth of personal items to the Utica Township Volunteer Firefighters Association credit cards. Those items charged up on the card include clothing, Netflix, tanning, and more. She then failed to report those charges as personal income on her taxes. Right now, she's currently being held in the Scott County, Indiana jail. This photo you see on your screen coming from them. Her first court appearance is scheduled for Monday morning. But that wasn't the only new development in the Jamie Knoll case today. The family of Knoll's late brother Leon has filed a petition to reopen his estate. They claim Jamie ripped them off and instead enriched himself and his daughter. Leon died in 2018 and Jamie was made the controller of the estate. Focus reporter Travis Breeze tells us what the family is hoping to get. They are in disbelief. What they've shared with me was that this was such a low point for them. They had just lost their father and, you know, he completely took advantage of them. A Attorney Amy Wheatley in New Albany is representing the three children of William Leon Knoll. Leon died in 2018 and his estate closed in 2020. On February 9th, police said they were investigating the estate and had proof that Jamie profited as controller. He allegedly sold Leon's house to his own daughter, Casey, for $180,000 and gave her $36,000 of equity in the house. Police say that money should have gone to Leon's kids. Each one of the heirs received a distribution, but it is our contention that it was not all that they were entitled to. Police also say Noel took $52,000 out and replaced it with money from the Utica Township Volunteer Firefighters Association and took $16,000 out for basement repairs. Wheatley says they are entitled to at least $52,000, but the amount would be tripled when paid out, which is known as treble damages. Travis Breeze, WHAS 11 on your side. Wheatley says their petition to reopen the estate will also need a special judge appointed, just like Jamie Knoll's criminal case. That could take a few days. American Amy, yes. No, it doesn't get more American. She's out there exercising her First Amendment right, auditing, holding the government officials accountable. She's got the camera going. She's got courage. But not only that, she's reporting on courageous stories. That's right, folks. All the big YouTubers know. They're like, okay, you can't make 20 cents a day reporting on stories like certain stories. Well, American Amy has courage. So please go subscribe to her channel and uh, watch her shows. She's a great reporter and she's a great auditor. She's out there doing it for real. Thanks for taking your time this morning to watch the Bad Apple Report right here at home on the range every morning at 7.30 a.m. And thanks again, folks. You guys, if this channel's almost grown to 25,000 now, and it's just because of you. Thank you for hitting the like button, sharing these videos with all your friends, subscribing. You guys are the best. You've really grown the channel. Thank you so much. You've made my day, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks again. I wish you woke up in the middle of the night Cause you can't sleep Wide awake and tossing cause you can't stop Thinking